Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to another episode from me, Amamans, and this is the World Edit mini series. If you saw the last episode, I showed you how to install World Edit, and at the end of that video, I was sat atop of this very small sphere made out of note blocks. This episode, we're going to go through some of the basic commands that you can use in World Edit that is going to make your brain go pop. Trust me, it's made mine pop. I only installed this as I record this 72 hours ago. So I'm still trying to get my head around how amazing this particular little addition to your Minecraft game is. But first off, I just want to show you a really important website. I wanted to share with you this website. This website is minecraft-ids grahamedgecombe.com or Graham Edgecombe has put together a serious list of very important information. All of these are the ID numbers of the various different types of blocks that you can get in Minecraft. So you've got naught is air, one is stone, and then you've got the stone variants there using a colon six, etc. So I'm gonna put the link to this one in the description below. If you need to know what the code is, what the ID code for any Minecraft block, Literally, this is where you need to come. It's not been updated for 116 yet, but everything up to 115 is in here, and I thoroughly recommend you use this as a reference source. I'm now safely back on the ground, away from that dune sphere of note blocks. I can't say Death Star for licensing and regulatory reasons, but we are now gonna get on with playing around with this world edit. Now you need your world edit tool, and that is the wooden axe. There's two ways in which you can get it. You can either go into your creative menu, pick up a wooden axe, works perfectly well, or you can type slash slash wand, and you will be given your wooden axe like your wand, like the fairy that you are in your right hand. Now, you cannot interact with any blocks whilst you are holding this wand in your right hand. It just won't let you because this is how you get World Edit to listen to you. So for example, I'm going to select this block here with my left mouse button. First position set to 172.71.46. If I then come across here and right click on that block, that sets the second position to 168.71.44. And it tells me that that selected 15 blocks, just a very few blocks. Now I can start to manipulate that area in any way that I want. So for example, we can change the block. If we want to change that block, we can go slash slash set and we can pop in the block that we want to set it to. So for example, if we want to change this to stone, we can either type in stone and have it there or for a shortcut, if you know what your block ID is off the top of your head, if you use it a lot, you can just type one because that's stone. Press enter that changes that area that we just selected into stone. If you think, oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. I don't want to do that at all. I want to keep it as grass, slash slash undo, and it just undoes that. However, if you change your mind back, oh, actually, no, I do want to do that, slash slash redo, and back it comes again. So you can go backwards and forwards along your chain of world edit commands. And if I've done three or four commands, as long as I'm in the same game, I can undo those commands in order to get back to the place that I was. Now, be it bear in mind, if you're replacing blocks that would normally decay under certain circumstances, so for example, oak leaves, so let's just slash slash set oak leaves because I've got no idea what the number is off the top of my head for oak leaves. That changes those to oak leaves, but they will start to decay. So they'll, they'll basically act like a tree that's not got its stalk. So do bear in mind that if you do something like that with World Edit, they act as if they were originally in the world and not a block that you placed manually. Now that's dead easy if you're on a flat surface. You just lump that bit and you hit that bit and you've got yourself a flat surface described. So, But what if you want to do a three-dimensional object whilst you're on a flat surface? Well, dear viewer, that is not a problem. Select this one there and then come along to the base of where you want to do it if i just get rid of that where you want to do it and click up and then how far up do you want to go do you want this to be five high so if you're up five hit that and it puts a block of glass five above the place that you were just standing where your feet were and then you can set your second position there and then you can do exactly the same set and we can turn this to, I don't know, should we change this to dirt, uh, dirt or grass blocks? Sorry, there you go. You've got a load of grass blocks there. Undo that. There you go. And your glass block is back there. Maybe want to change this to stone again. So set that to one. Uh, no, we don't want stone. We want something else. Set that to 25. And we've got note blocks. Actually, we don't want note blocks. Undo. We want to go back to stone. Actually, no, we just want to get rid of it all. And there we go. That's how you cycle through that in a three-dimensional area. 
Now I've thrown up this little seven by seven house here for the purposes of the next few commands. It's got inside as well as outside, just so you know that it's not just copying the large square blocks, it's actually copying all the detail blocks as well. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna select this entire house, including the floor, which means that we need to select the, the level below place where we've actually got our feet. And we need to know how tall that is. And you can do that in a number of ways. I'm just gonna place some blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We know that is eight tall, which is very useful. So we can then come along to this side and using that up command that we used before, get to the furthest outmost on the left, buttons do count, little bits sticking out like this do count, the overhang counts, and the furthest on the right there, and the overhang is actually the furthest. So this is our block, the one that I'm looking at now, and do slash up eight. That creates us a glass block in the top corner of this particular thing. Then come along to either one of your corners, either this one down here, which is the opposite corner to where the glass is, and use left click to click on the outermost block on the floor. Select that for position one, and then come around, select that for position two. We have now selected this entire house, including the floor, and obviously all the grass that we've got around it. And we can do a number of things. For example, we can cut it out. Let's just cut this house out. We don't want that anymore. We just want a very shallow swimming pool. Or you could maybe undo that. And we can just copy the house like this. So that house is now copied. If I come along to the left and press paste, I'm putting a copy of that house right next to itself. Now you'll notice it's also brought along the glass block because it was part of that cube, but you can just obviously get rid of that glass block if you wanted to like that. Now let's say we wanted to do something else. Maybe we want to just move the house really easy. So select the block again. So I'm just gonna select that block. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna move this house. I just want it to move a little distance. So I'm gonna stand in front of it, facing this house like this. I'm gonna do slash slash move. And let's say we just wanna move it four blocks. And bang, it moves back four blocks. Remember, we are also moving these floor blocks as well. So if you go across an overhang, you'll find that these blocks will move with it as well. Now, if we want to, we could undo that. Let me just bring that poor house back and we've already got this selected. I've not selected any other areas. We maybe want to move it in this direction a little bit. So I'm facing this direction, move, and let's just move it three. And it moves along three. You can see it leaves the gap there. And then you can, if you want to, you can bring it back. You've got the ability to do all of this moving and shaking. It is a really nice tool. Now, what we can also do is rotate. So if I come along and I need to copy this house and it copies you relative to the place in which you are standing where your feet are so I'm going to come and stand not on the block right next to it not on that block but this block because that is the block outside of our zone and I'm going to face it and I'm going to do slash slash copy I'm then going to do slash slash rotate 90 and that represents 90 degrees. I've now taken the blueprint of that house and rotated it 90 degrees. I now want to place it down relative to me standing here 90 degrees. So if you think about where you want it to go, oh, I've just hit the first position, that was daft. Let me do slash slash paste and it gives me the house but rotated 90 degrees. You can see there is exactly the same house but in a different position. One case in point, if you don't want to use the ax to set your positions, you can use the pause command. So for example, if I'm stood on this block here and I do slash slash pause one, that sets the first position to where my feet are, literally where I am now. So if I then come up and do slash slash pause two, that sets the second position as if I've just hit this block with an ax. It's not got the accuracy of doing the up with the glass, but it is a lot quicker. So you've obviously got that choice. If I then put set one, it gives me a stone pillar as if I was uh, blocking that off with an ax as well. So just undo that. That's just one little point just to make in there, just to throw it in. Other things you can do, you can make various shapes. I'm gonna make two shapes with you here. 
first one I'm going to do is H pyramid. Now what H pyramid does is builds you a hollow pyramid. Now you need to put two separate um, pieces of data and you need to select the block that you're going to do it with. So I'm going to select, let's say, uh, glass, Minecraft glass. And then you also say how big you want it as a radius of this pyramid. So from the center, how many blocks out? So if I say four blocks out, this is going to give me a pyramid that is going to surround me in four blocks in every direction because it does it from the point at which my feet are. Bang. One glass pyramid. And if I just come out of it and just get that out of the way you can see it is a genuine glass pyramid and you can make those pretty big you could do 20 or 25 whatever you wanted made out of whatever material you wanted as well another thing that's really cool is the sphere i made it out of note blocks over there so i'm just going to do another sphere here and bear in mind you can do this at any point in the air or on the ground but it will replace any of the blocks on the ground with whatever it is you're making a sphere out of so if you don't want to mess up a building make sure you're well out of the way again do slash slash h sphere that's hollow sphere and we want this to be made of i don't know something uh, let's do ra i don't know random i'm just going to put a random number just because we can and we're going to make this uh, a radius of 10 around me so what is this block i actually don't know what this block is 30 what is that ah spider web that's quite interesting so we've got a spider web uh, sphere that looks really cool it's like a massive snowball in the sky and you can do these spheres bigger or smaller you can also make the pyramid and the sphere not hollow just by doing the command sphere rather than H sphere and the command pyramid rather than H pyramid. We're back in front of one of these houses that we've cloned up because I want to show you a way of playing around with some of these items. So if we select the same place again, so that is one and then come down and select the second one as well. We know it's that one there. We've selected that entire house and we think, you know what? I don't want it to be cobble on the walls. I want those walls to be stone. So what we can do is we can do replace. You'll notice everything is slash slash pretty much except for that up. And we can say we want to select the cobble. So we want a Minecraft cobblestone and we want to replace it for Minecraft stone. So let's just get Minecraft stone. And if you watch that wall, bang, we've changed the cobblestone box to stone blocks just in one command and again we can do that with any of these blocks do bear in mind actually however steps tend to point in a singular direction so if we were to change the roof without being clever and i haven't worked out how to be clever yet in the comments below do you know how to be clever i'd be really interested all of the steps will be facing the same way so they'll all be facing correctly but these will all be facing in the opposite direction so do be aware of that if you start willy-nilly in blocks that have got a specific orientation. Another really useful tool that you can use within uh, World Edit is getting rid of liquids. So if you're trying to drain something really quickly, say for example, you're doing a garden farm and you want to drain out your ocean monument, well, you can do it a lot quicker than doing a load of sand and then doing it one by one. You can use the tool slash slash drain and then the radius upon which you want to drain the liquid. Now this works with any liquid, water and lava, but it doesn't affect solid blocks. So let's say I want to take out any water within a 20 block radius of me. Hit that, bang. All of this water instantly is drained out. Now obviously this is a river, so the water is still flowing in from that bit and it's still flowing in from that bit, but it gives the squid in this particular area a bit of a headache. So I just wanted to demonstrate a couple of the applications that we can use these commands for when we're building up something large. Now, this is a wall that I've uh, just put together. It's a bit of cobble. It's got different blocks in there. It's got uh, different words. It's got a bit of floor. Now, it's not a complicated wall, but it did take you know a few minutes to put together. And what I don't want to do is have to spend those few minutes over and over and over again. So what I do is I come along here and I take the block that is the furthest most out of this end, which is, you can see, this one. And with my wooden axe, I select that as first position. I then come to the second one, the far corner, which is there, and we select that as the second position. I then come directly facing this leg 
exactly on it and I press slash slash copy because remember it copies relative to the position of the player and then come along to the other end because the repeat starts here and I come to exactly the same place relative position which is right in front of this love and I do slash slash paste and then I come here and I do slash slash paste and once more slash slash paste and that gives me a wall that is exactly the same design but repeats and repeats and repeats all the way over so you can form some really big structures using this principle now the other thing we can do is use the rotate command to help us build symmetrical objects so a good example of this would be a tower i've built this area here and it is one quarter of a tower and it's a symmetrical tower which is quite useful now what we know is that this is 14 blocks high now i know this because i built it and i counted so come to the furthest most point out press slash up 14 put myself a block right there and i'm going to select that block and i'm going to come down and select the furthest most block here as well and then i'm going to get to the very center of the structure because it's a symmetrical object so it's got to come right to the very center which is right in the middle of this block here so i'm stood on top of the block again slash slash copy so i've copied this entire structure i then slash slash rotate 90 and if i just look doesn't matter which direction i'm facing it only takes the position that i've uh, just copied it in my my facing direction is irrelevant and then slash slash paste bang then slash slash rotate 90 slash slash paste slash slash rotate 90 slash slash paste and then if i come away i have got a completed tower in all four directions so if you're making a really complex structure that is symmetrical you can save yourself boatloads of time by doing it this way so there is a selection of some of the most basic commands in world edit now they might be the most basic but i bet they will be the ones that you use the most to be able to build structures that have either repeating parts or you want to repeat a structure somewhere else or it's symmetrical and you want to spin it all the way around this is a really great set of instructions i'm going to be doing another tutorial on how to do terraforming with world edit and also one on how to be able to cut and paste structures that you've got in different worlds so take from one world and plonk it down in another one so those videos coming soon but for now if you've enjoyed this video please do let me know in the comments below what parts were useful and maybe anything that i don't know because remember i'm a noob at this as well if you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it, and I will keep on making it. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.